Mr Chair, what an intellectually loose, if not uh, somewhat poisonous contribution from Labor's soon-to-be-sacked broadcasting spokesperson. Intellectually loose on a number of fronts. I checked those figures closely, but she repeated a couple of times that there's 83,000 households in New Zealand without Sky TV. Well, Ms Curran, I think you need to check your facts. Then we had a long, rambling discourse going through the history of New Zealand television. Well, you know, if you take 1.6 million households and you subtract just over 800,000 who have Sky, you don't get 83,000. I'm very surprised because that member reads laboriously and continuously from prepared notes, but she hasn't got the wherewithal and the wit to pick up the most basic error. And if she doesn't know the most basic fundamentals of the numbers in this whole equation, how could you rely on anything else she said? Because she went on to make out that the national government wasn't honest on issues of broadcasting. And yet she was fundamentally misleading the House, misleading the House by trying to make out that this archiving scheme would result in all those works going on to pay TV. I thought I heard the Minister say that I couldn't hear it clearly because it was a cat calling from the other side, but I thought I heard the Minister say that the member was deliberately misleading the House. Now that is wrong to say that and accuse the member of that. Yeah. And uh, if the Minister did say that, I think he should thank withdraw. If he did not, thank, I, thank I the accept the clarification. I, I, thank, I thank the member for that. The word misleading was certainly used, but misleading the House I don't think was. Um, but I just caution the member. Uh, the Minister is to be very careful with the use of the words. Honourable uh, Dr. Mr. Dr. Chair, Dr. well, just like that Minister got the figures so badly wrong about the number of houses with, Sky, with and without Sky TV, she also got it really badly wrong in that she doesn't understand the fundamentals of this bill. That's the truth of it, because she is telling the public out there, and apparently it's not deliberate, she's telling people that this is going to free up archive works to only be shown on pay TV. And anyone who's read the bill, I don't know if this member's read the bill, will know that this is freeing up works that can only be shown on free-to-air television. And, Mr Chair, I mean, they can try and shout the argument down, but I've got the microphone. But, look, the other thing that's really interesting, that member over there said that... Uh, Basically, she, she harangued us for doing away with TVNZ7. Well, I can tell you why I think she's very soon to be sacked. Because Phil Goff, he was on the radio yesterday. And just like he had to sack Brendan Burns, I think when he hears how his spokesperson's gone on tonight, he's going to have to have a word with, there, with her. Because Phil Goff was asked yesterday, how does Labor feel about this bill? Are you supporting it? Phil gets the first bit right. He says, no, we're not. Then he's asked, so will Labor be putting more money into TVNZ? Would you save TVNZ7? He goes, well, you know, look, I can't make a whole series of promises at this time until I've seen the whole picture. I mean, we've got to focus on helping people struggling with the cost of living. We've got to get rid of that deficit. And then we've got a series of things that we'd want to do, and that may include TVNZ. Well, isn't that the point? Basically, $79 million over six years went into this channel. Labor had no idea how they were going to continue to fund it. They'd made no allowance for it. They'd said it would be self-funding. In the end, it isn't. We're left with one heck of a problem, which we've solved. What would they do? Would they bring it back? Will Claire Curran be stupid enough to contradict Phil Goff tonight and get up and promise we will fund TVNZ7? And I challenge her to do that, but I bet she won't because she'll be hauled into Phil Goff's office tomorrow, if she does, and said, told, sorry darling, you've just added another cost, another unfunded promise onto the list of what's going to be a very heavy load strung around our neck at the next election. Now, fundamentally, what this bill does, it brings honesty. And another thing Phil Goff said here... Phil Goff said yesterday, and if you know, if we're totally honest, you've got to say it's hard to see much on TV1 that's public service. So Phil Goff actually gets it, but of course, because ideologically he's stuck in a time warp in the wrong party, he has to go along with this Labour Party charade that the TVNZ charter 
ever actually did anything. And you can tell by the catcall and the shouting there, they know they've lost this argument intellectually. They know the Charter never did anything. They know fundamentally that they wouldn't bring it back. They know they won't be funding TVNZ7 because they know that they can't afford to. They have no intention of doing that. They had the chance to push through a regulatory review, but they left it to us. They deferred it, they deferred it, they deferred it because they knew at the end of the day it wasn't publicly palatable. No one wanted this review. When we took power, we were upfront and honest about it. And then all they can do is criticise us for doing something that they never had the guts to do themselves. So this spokesperson, totally out of uh, step with their leader, this is a great bill. If they had any sense, they would be voting for it. Chairman. Mr Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Chair. Uh, well, when this... Uh